DWC or deep water culture. In this video, I'll explain what it is and how it works, as well as the pros and cons of using a deep water culture system to grow your plants. Let's first talk about hydroponics in general. Hydroponics is a method of growing plants in water. The water must have nutrients and oxygen for the plants to thrive. There are many different variations of hydroponic techniques, such as aquaponics, aeroponics, floating systems, NFT or the nutrient film technique, the Kratky method, as well as many variations on each of these types. Aquaponics introduces fish in the water reservoir that is set up to grow the hydroponic plants. The idea is to feed the fish and then their waste products turn into nitrates that benefit the plants growing in that water. Interesting, but this video is dedicated to DWC, deep water culture, without the fish. In a deep water culture setup, the plant is suspended above the water with most of the root system submerged into the water. The water needs to be well oxygenated so that the plant doesn't drown. This is similar to when you grow in soil. The soil also needs to be oxygen rich and not compacted. To get oxygen into the water, we use an air pump and an air stone. Next, the water needs nutrients. This is even more critical when growing in water than in soil, since soil naturally contains nutrients. And of course, you'll need a container or a reservoir to hold enough water for the plant. Usually, the larger the reservoir, the better. A major advantage to using deep water culture system over soil is that once you set it up, there's very little more you need to do in terms of maintenance. The setup is simple with very few parts needed. The growing time is usually faster than when compared with growing in soil. But you will need to watch your water level and add water or nutrients as needed. In smaller systems, it's more difficult to maintain a stable environment. That's why bigger is really better when you're choosing a container to grow in. You'll need to watch the pH levels, which can change when you add more water or more nutrients. Also, if there's a power outage or your air pump fails, then the roots of the plant may not get enough oxygen and the plant will drown. If you're growing indoors in a temperature controlled environment, you usually don't have to worry about fluctuating water temperatures. But if you're growing outdoors or you don't have AC or heat indoors, then this is also something to be aware of. The temperature of the water should not fluctuate too much. Here's what a simple setup looks like. The plants are suspended above the water with the roots submerged into the water. Make sure that no part of the plant or its stem is submerged. There should also be a gap of an inch to an inch and a half in between the water level and the plant so that most of the roots are submerged, but there may be some that are hovering just above the water. These will stay hydrated from the water that is kicked up into the airspace from the air stone. I use net cups to suspend my plants above the water. This is what a net cup looks like. For most of my plants, I use three inch net cups. The plant is sitting in the net cup and it's supported by hydroponic clay pebbles. You can also use perlite or coconut coir if you want to, but I find the clay pebbles are cleaner and I can easily use them again. I normally grow the seedlings in rock wool. This is what the rock wool looks like. And then once the seedling has roots coming out from the bottom of the rock wool, I put the rock wool into a net cup fill in the gaps around the rock wool with clay pebbles, and then suspend the plant above the water. One way to do this is to buy a tote or a bucket that can hold around five gallons of water. Make sure the plastic is from food grade material. There should be a recycle number on the container. The numbers two, four, and five are generally considered the most food safe. Don't use anything with the number three or six on it. Next, you'll need to drill holes in the lid of the container to fit the net cups into. The net cup has a lip that allows it to hang from the hole. Use a 3 inch hole saw to drill the hole or use a knife to cut out the holes if the plastic is thin enough. You'll also need to drill a hole for the air pumps tubing or two holes if you want to run two air stones. Obviously, you want to drill this hole at the top of the container above the water level. Next, you'll need an air pump. These are cheap and you can find them anywhere they sell fish tanks or just look on Amazon. The air pump will pump air through the tubing into the water. So to get nice fine bubbles, you'll need to attach an air stone to the end of the tubing. 
make sure to place the air pump above the water level so in case there's a power outage the water can't flow back to the pump there are check valves you can buy to prevent this from happening but without the check valve you'll need to make sure the pump is placed higher than your water level now you need to add nutrients to your water the seed can germinate without nutrients but once you have a seedling it will start to need nutrients there are many formulas on the market the one i use for my larger fruiting hydroponic plants is the master blend formula it's a three-part formula that you mix the master blend calcium nitrate and Epsom salt. General Hydroponics Flora Series is another good choice. It's also a three-part formula that you mix in different quantities based on your plant's growth stage. The directions are in both packages. Experiment with different feeding schedules. You might want to add less nutrients the next time you refill the water level. In this case, less is sometimes better. You can always add more nutrients if the plants don't look like they're growing well. But if you give them too much nutrients, then they will suffer from nutrient burn and may not recover. Once you've mixed your nutrients into the water, you'll need to test the water to make sure the pH is within a standard range for your plant. Most plants should be between 5.5 and 6.5. There are solutions of pH up and pH down that you can use if your water pH is too high or too low. The temperature of your water should be around 68 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 20 degrees Celsius. There is a little give or take on that. You can't always keep your water at that temperature. My water is usually a little higher at around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If the water temperature is too high, then the oxygen level in the water will go down. If the water temperature is too low, the plants will think that the growing season is over and we're moving into fall or winter. Another good question is, how often should I change my water? Well, that depends on a few things. One is the size of your reservoir. The smaller the reservoir, the more often you'll need to change out the water. Second is the type of plant you're growing. If the growth cycle is short, as it is with lettuce, you may not have to change out your water at all. If the growing cycle is longer, then you will have to. The stage of growth will also factor in. As the plants start to flower and fruit, they will use up more of the nutrient-rich water, which will have to be replenished more often. Check your water levels and add as needed, usually every two to three weeks, again, depending on the conditions I just mentioned. Some people do not do a complete water change, but rather add water with some nutrient solution mixed in, but this doesn't always work well. Experimenting and learning from mistakes will teach you what works in your unique growing environment. Growing outdoors has many more challenges with fluctuating temperatures, animals, insects, and wild winds or stormy weather. If you're just starting out, I would recommend setting up a smaller system indoors or at least in a well-protected area. The easiest plants to grow hydroponically are the many varieties of lettuce. Herbs also do very well, and I would suggest starting out growing these. Once you feel you know what you're doing and are up for the challenge, then try tomatoes, cucumbers, or peppers, and get ready for some setbacks or even outright failures. Chalk it up to learning and growing, literally. Now it's your turn to give it a try. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it, and thank you for watching. Bye.